if you stimulate this brain area, a tiny little brain area in a human, they immediately feel as if some challenge is impending and they're going to meet that challenge. It's a forward center of mass against challenge response. You can turn on and off tenacity and willpower. If people thought or were told that willpower was a limited resource, that's indeed what they observed experimentally. But that if they were taught or were told that willpower is unlimited and, and divorced from glucose levels, well then that's exactly what you so saw. You say The mindset and belief effects are absolutely extraordinary and, and very real, right? I mean, I think recently I've been reading and researching a lot about and did a podcast on tenacity and willpower. Mm. And there was this idea early on from Baumeister and colleagues that willpower is a limited resource. Some e of that Ego depletion? Willpower. Ego depletion. Yes. It was controversial. Um, they showed that, you know, replenishing glucose in between hard tasks could restore willpower. They showed that, uh, was it juries or judges that were low in blood glucose were more likely to give harsher sentences, stuff like this? Yeah, it, it sort of wicked out to a number of naturalistic situations and it made good sense. And then my colleague, Carol Dweck, also in the psychology department at Stanford, most famously known for her work on growth mindset, did an experiment in which they essentially asked whether or not tenacity and willpower are limited in terms of being a, some sort of resource and also whether or not it was somehow linked to glucose availability fuel in the brain and body and found that if people thought or were told that uh, willpower was a limited resource, that's indeed what they observed experimentally, but that if they were taught or were told that willpower is unlimited and, and divorced from glucose levels, well, then that's exactly what you so saw. You're say, so you're saying that learning about ego depletion and believing that willpower is a limited resource is an information hazard that is self-fulfilling. Uh, potentially. Now, <laughs> now, now, now ba Baumeister, you know, showed himself to be, you know, pretty determined when and countered the 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 Dweck counter by showing that if indeed if there's a hard task followed by a hard task, then your beliefs about willpower can impact your performance on the second task. So mm. Dweck, the AKA Dweck is right, but that if you have a hard task, hard task, and then another hard task. So back to back to back tasks or more, which is a lot of what life is like. Well, then it seems that the willpower is a limited resource and glucose supporting will willpower theory holds up a bit better. What have you come to believe about the difference between willpower and motivation and discipline? How, how do kind of all of these fit together in your mind? Yeah. So willpower and tenacity are related to motivation, but they're not quite the same. I think we should think of uh, motivation as the verb state that moves us from, let's just say, apathy to tenacity. Okay, so it's it's sort of, it's the verb function that moves us along that continuum: ap apathy at one end, tenacity and willpower, uh, strong exertion of willpower at the other end. One of the most interesting structures in the entire nervous system is one that gets very little coverage, unfortunately. In fact, most neuroscientists aren't aware of what its function is. And it's called the AMCC, which is the anterior mid cingulate cortex. You have one on each side of the brain. The name isn't really important, but we want to, you know, to, to the credit of the, of the structure, we should name it the AMCC. The AMCC receives inputs from a lot of interesting brain areas related to reward, related to autonomic function. So how alert or sleepy we are to prediction, to prediction error, it's a hub for many, many inputs and outputs, uh, hormone systems, et cetera. Beautiful experiments done by my colleague, Joe Pervizi at Stanford have shown that if you stimulate this brain area, a tiny little brain area in a human, they immediately feel as if some challenge is impending and they're going to meet that challenge. It's a forward center of mass against challenge response. This has been seen in independent subjects. They do controls where they then tell them they're stimulating, but they're not actually stimulating. And they're like, I don't feel anything. You can turn on and off tenacity and willpower. So there's literally a hub for this. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Individuals that are dieting or resisting some sort of tempting behavior and are successful in doing that, the size and activity in their AMCC goes up over time and the structure gets bigger. Dieters who fail, flat or downward trajectory of the size and activation of the AMCC. This can be taken too far. Individuals with anorexia nervosa, the most deadly of all psychiatric disorders where a dep self deprivation of food activates excessive reward, there's this kind of loop of reward, their AMCCs are significantly greater size than others. So there's, you know, this can be taken too far. Super agers, which is a bit of a misnomer because these individuals are people who maintain 
healthy cognitive function, similar to people in their 20s and 30s into their 70s, 80s, and 90s, their AMCC maintains or increases in size into their later years. Typical agers, the size of, we always hear that you lose brain mass ac across your lifespan. Well, most of it is from the AMCC. And beautifully, and this is two of my favorite results that really bring this around to a protocol or a takeaway. If people are given an easy task, the AMCC isn't activated. If they're given a hard task, in particular a hard task, physical or cognitive, that they really don't want to do, the AMCC levels of activity go through the roof. And here's what's really cool. They gave aging, let's, you know, people age 60 to 79, the task of adding three hours extra per week of cardiovascular exercise. Now that's a lot, right? Three, one hour, they call them aerobic classes, but getting their heart rate up to about 65, 70% of, of maximum. So it's getting into like zone, zone three. three ish yeah, yeah, area. Yeah. yeah, people can look up zone three, but you nailed it. The size of their AMCC increased across that six month protocol and offset the normal age related decline in this in this brain area in terms of its size. The theory that's starting to emerge is that the AMCC isn't just about tenacity and willpower to push through hard things, that it may actually be related to one's will to live, one's will to continue living. And I think this is these are some of the most important results. By the way, I didn't participate in any of the research that I just described. I spent a lot of time with that literature, but I think it's so important. I mean, we hear about the amygdala, the hippocampus, the prefrontal cortex, all of very important brain structures. But if nothing else, hopefully this conversation the one, put the, the AMCC on the map. The one that right. literally could create your will to live is the one that's being overlooked a little right. bit. And and it can be and what's interesting about this structure is that it's involved in generating tenacity and willpower for all things, not just for one situation. And what's really wonderful. I think about the, the research literature on this is it's so clear what we need to do. We need to do things, let's say like me, you, you're a person who enjoys weightlifting and you love running. I love those two activities. Well, guess what? Those activities, even if they're hard, like a hard run that I'm really enjoying or some hard sets in the gym, not going to increase the size or activity of the AMCC. People love to over um, romanticize the utility of those final two reps. Sure, okay, mm. pushing to failure, great. You know, running hard till your lungs burn, great. But if you enjoy that, you're not increasing your amount of tenacity and willpower, at least according to the research data. Of course, you don't wanna do things that are going to damage you psychologically or physically, of course, of course, but everyone, I believe would benefit from picking a few micro sucks. So little things, the things like the, the I really don't wanna deal with that right now. That's the kind of thing, those harder tasks where you have to breach some barrier, some mm. resistance mm. to put it into, you know, Stephen Pressfield language or um, our friend David Goggins, right? You know, the, this idea that one has to callous the mind. I mean, it, David said that, right? He's and probably got a hypertrophied AMCC that's bigger than most people's. Pr probably. And and the, the beauty of having a, uh, an AMCC that's highly, uh, you know, available for activation is that, you know, through the micro and the macro sucks of the day, you, you have this thing, it's like an engine that you can devote to other things. So yeah. then you can devote the AMCC to other endeavors. 